Hello and welcome back to The Shallow Proclamation. Uh, my name is Paul and this is... <laughs> Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> and together we are Paul and Thomas. Um, we are continuing our watch through of all of Doctor Who. We are on episode five of Marco Polo. So we're going to read our synopsis of the episode so we know what's going to come up. Uh, so if you remember at the end of the last episode, uh, Ian had escaped from the tent, the high security tent, and he'd gone to the grab the guard, but the guard was already dead. Um, so here we are in episode five, the rider from Shang Tu. And we're told, unwilling to leave Polo and his party to their fate, Ian alerts them to the oncoming danger. He wakes Polo, who wakes Tigana, and they begin to arm themselves. Ian decides it would be best to frighten off the attacking bandits by throwing bamboo into the fire to explode noisily. When the bandits attack, Akamat is slain by Tigana as he's on the point of exposing him. <laughs> Sounds like he put his trousers down or something. <laughs> Get the on other... with it, Paul. <laughs> The other, the other bandits flee in fear. In thanks for their help defeating the bandit attack, Marco Polo allows <laughs> Susan and Ping Cho to share company once more and pursue, permits the others to walk freely again. The Doctor and his companions have worked out that Tigana is the source of many of the journey's troubles but cannot make Marco Polo realise how dangerous he is. A new traveller arrives at the caravan, a message rider named Ling Tao. He has travelled from Shang Tu, which is 300 miles away in just 24 hours, changing horses every three miles. He bears a message commanding the caravan to speed up, so Marco orders that once they reach the city of Cheng Ting, the travellers shall all take to the horseback, while the TARDIS and other belongings are brought on later. As ever, Tigana has another plot at the next way station. What's that? <laughs> what are you giggling at? <laughs> Get it together, man. He meets an ally called Kuju and bribes him to try to steal the TARDIS while the convoy is split up and take it to Karakorum, where Nokai's troops are massing. Ping Cho knows where Marco's hidden the two... two keys to the TARDIS and gives one to Susan... T <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> gives one to Susan to help the time travellers escape later that night the Doctor and his companions sneak out to return to the TARDIS and escape but Susan returns to, to say goodbye to Ping Cho as she returns she begins to enter the TARDIS but she's grabbed by Tigana she screams there we go awesome I am sorry about that it's just the joke you made was too funny yeah, <laughs> can you change the speed can we wash them at like 1.5 or anything can we <laughs> we get through this um, one quickly <laughs> let's have a look not that not that we're struggling with this oh hello oh hello god do 1.5 2 might be a bit much look at this think how much time we're going to save <laughs> you can spend more time with the wife and kids Paul rather than <laughs> I think we may have just hit on something here Oh, the doctor's wielding a sword. That's a bit sordid. I think you, I think you may have done the sword joke already, Thomas. Not on this channel. <laughs> Not in this. Uh, no, I think you have. <laughs> I'm sorry to break it to you. <laughs> have I? But we've. <laughs> Repetition is a form of comedy. <laughs> Honestly, first thing you need to learn about me is that I've got nothing for you. <laughs> I thought earlier on it was the actor Gareth Hunt, but um, I don't think it is. Right. Gareth Hunt, who was in the Avengers, the new Avengers, not the not the Avengers, as in Captain America, as right. in um, as in um, Steed and Purdy. From you probably don't even know what the Avengers is. You're such you're so young. Yeah, I was born in '99, I think. <laughs> I think I know. You think? <laughs> yeah. I'm worried that you don't know. I still get ID'd. Although this moustache is helping. <laughs> is is the reason the moustache? Do they not ID you because of the moustache? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm going to put this to the to the viewers of this channel. Do you think I should keep the moustache or not 
feel free to comment below. Get your right. vote in. And I may listen to it. So. <laughs> oh, look. Akamat's taking one for the team there. Bamboo's exploding. It's a shame we can't watch it because it might rival the fight scene from An Unearthly Child. Oh. Well, I mean, that sounded like it was pretty good. And the couple of pictures gave the sense that there was some good action going on. Yeah. I know it's hard to judge this based on this reconstruction, but it does seem that Ping Cho is giving a good performance. Because you, you kind of believe that she has a slightly mysterious quality. Um, and a serene quality. Almost like Susan, actually. You can see why they've kind of formed a bit of a bond. Yeah. And she comes across, albeit from the, what we can glean, she seems like quite a strong character, actually, as well. You know, she's... Um, you know, it was in the last story trying to convince Marco Polo that Tigano was... Um, was kind of a rogue. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a pretty bold move, isn't it? Because Marco Polo's like... He's, he's the big daddy, isn't he? The head honcho. Yep. <laughs> My Lord Polo. I'm here. My Lord Polo. It's hard to take that seriously, isn't it? Because yeah, I'm just thinking yeah. of a certain mint yeah. company. <laughs> there we go. We've got another sponsor. I know. I was going to say, these seven episodes sponsored by Polos. The mint with a hole. <laughs> That's... That's in the adverts, isn't it? I saw a great at Polo advert a while back. I think Ardman made it, which was basically the story of how a hole ends up in each Polo. And it was this massive, complex machine um, doing all this stuff. And then all it does is this tiny little arm pops, <laughs> yeah. pops the hole out of the Polo. Do they still sell the holes? Oh, I think I heard of that. I'm they not did sure, for a while. Actually. There was a point where you could just buy the tiny little little bits that had been poked out. That's good they're not going to waste. <laughs> I have a suspicion they weren't really the bits that were <laughs> pushed right. out. Now, are these koi or are they carp? Is there a difference? Is it not a oh. koi carp? Oh, so maybe all kois are carps, but not all carps are koi. Carps koi. <laughs> You see this, I hate to say it, but this set is flipping <laughs> stunning. Does look good. Does look good. That's a picture in the background, right? Well, it's all a photo, Paul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you mean the, oh yeah, the backdrop. It must be, right? Yeah. Quite convincing, though. Still, like, the skyline looks good as well. Yeah. Carol Ann Ford apparently said about that monkey that it was a nightmare to work with, that it kind of bit everybody and was just generally annoying. Oh, really? Yeah. Choose your colleagues carefully, you know. Never work with children or animals, is what they say, innit? So. Yeah. Come in. So why you're doing this show with me, I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm both of those things. <laughs> Well, the way I've seen you eat that Bombay mix. <laughs> I do I do chomp it. <laughs> I have a tendency to chomp my Bombay mix. See, that's that's some great hair and uh, costume work as well, isn't it? You yeah, know, the costumes are authentic. Lovely. There we go. We've, we found something to talk about other than the location. Costumes. Yeah, yeah. These costumes are other as well. visual yeah. details. The TARDIS key design actually changes quite a bit over the years. I, I'm not sure how I'm not sure how prevalent it is on screen. I'm not sure how often really you see the TARDIS key, but definitely um, yeah. definitely in the TV movie it's very distinctive. It doesn't look at all like a key. Um, oh, really? They've been making a few visits to Timpson. <laughs> yeah. That's got a bit of a nativity vibe, doesn't it? Where the TARDIS That's true. is. Yeah. Little manger in front of the TARDIS there. Yeah. Well, there we go. I think I'm actually I think that works. 1.5 speed on those recons is probably okay because it's going I don't think we're ever going to be able to take in much from the dialogue to be honest. Yeah, and it's I feel like we're still able to to kind of 
follow it in, in a way but it, by picking up the pace of it it makes it a little bit easier to stay concentrated stay focused you, yep, you've no, just got the audio i listen to a lot of podcasts at two times speed um which i have mixed feelings about because i don't know i wouldn't want to get too used to it because then i have a conversation with someone afterwards and i'm like why are you speaking so slowly <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you mean. And some things are just too hard. Some people speak quite quickly anyway, so putting them at two times speed makes yeah. it too fast. But yeah, I often do that on some things. I'm just trying to quickly get through something um, like a podcast. I'll do that. Um, cool. Okay, so that was yeah. episode five. Um, I'm kind of hoping that as we get into episode six and seven, I, I mean, things will pick up a bit more as well because like, there's definitely, as is often the case, I think there's a bit of padding in the middle here. So... <laughs> Um, it does feel to me that, yeah, a seven-parter for Doctor Who is kind of hard to pull off, even if the episodes are only 20 minutes each. So we're only talking 140 minutes, a bit longer than your average feature film. But even so, breaking it up into seven parts, so you've got to kind of hit a cliffhanger each time. I think it's a hard thing to pull off. I felt that even the Daleks episode, we said couple of the ones in there were mm. fillers especially the ordeal of episode six <laughs> the ordeal. um That's but it was. you know i'm open to it i'm open to it i think it can work but it it really struck us that last story the two-parter how efficient and well made it was um yeah so. and i think it's something that the modern era has largely managed to do away with this sort of padded story particularly i mean obviously they went down to 45 minute stories basically which meant everything had to be thrown in and work um and normally if anything you you would occasionally wish in the modern era that something had been a two-parter in order to give it a bit more room to breathe um but i don't think i've ever i don't think i've really watched many two-parters in the modern era and thought to myself this is dragging you know yeah. it doesn't feel like part way through it starts to be filler um but, you know, I mean, I might be wrong. There might be some when we get there. Yeah, so guys, um, thanks for joining us for that one. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a like and a subscribe, and we will catch you for episode six next time. Take care. Bye-bye. All the best. Goodbye.